but we just got to La Linea, which is the town right next to Gibraltar, and it's pretty amazingly situated here. Um, the bus station is right there. We literally just left like a minute ago. These are our apartments. We're looking for our exact one right now, but it's right next to the bus station. Yeah. And the rock is right there, as you can see. The rock. The flags in the foreground, that's the border right there. So everything is like within a quarter mile walk. Hi. Hi. So here we are on our full day in Gibraltar. It's a really nice day. Apparently it's cloudy and foggy here a lot. So we're lucky to have a nice day. Uh, makes up for our lack of luck in Porto. And you can see the rock, of course. And uh, the border is right here in front of us. I'm pretty hungry. Are you hungry? Uh, I can eat. Do you smell what the rock is cooking? Uh, <laughs> how, long, how many hours have I been waiting to use that? Soup? Just actually a couple seconds, I just thought of it. That's how fast I am. So we just crossed into the border. The border patrol officer was very annoyed at me because I asked for a passport stamp for Tegan. And he very noticeably rolled his eyes and pushed our passports over to the next guy so he could stamp them. My bad. By default, they don't stamp them. So Chris, Kristen was acting like a tourist. I was being a tourist. I wanted it for my baby. I wanted it to be documented. Anyways, upon crossing the border, almost instantaneously is the airport, which has a red light because obviously there's planes and activity going on and once we get the green light go ahead we will cross and literally cross over a runway of an airport to get to Gibraltar. On foot. On foot. So this is the actual runway now that we're crossing? <laughs> Definitely a first. So Gibraltar is a British territory, um, that's why we had to cross the border b before. Um, the British took it over in the 1700s. It's a very strategic point, um, right on the uh, entry to the Mediterranean Sea from the ocean, so it's been fought over countless times throughout the years. Um, the British got it um, from the Treaty of Utrecht. And um, this year is called the Landport and it used to be the only way into Gibraltar other than by sea. Now, of course, uh, it's been built up a little bit more and you could drive into it. Um, we've read that There's the Spanish are a little peeved that it still is British. Apparently, people who live here, sometimes they have problems with their cars being vandalized when they drive into Spain. So obviously, the reason Gibraltar is what it is is because of military reasons, but in modern days, it doesn't have the same importance anymore. Now, they rely on tourism and gambling. And we've only been here for a couple minutes and we've already seen this and like I've seen some slot machines in like restaurants already so I'm sure we'll see that everywhere. Okay, so we were planning on taking the cable car up the rock. We ended up not doing that. We're now on like a van tour, which includes a bunch of sites. It seems to be worth it, hopefully. So this is our first viewpoint. We're only like halfway up the rock by now. And he was saying that mountain over there, that's Morocco, by the way. And that's called, what was it? Juan Marza. Juan, Juan Marza. Juan Marza. And that's the first uh, peak of Hercules and the rock itself is the second peak, so this viewpoint is called the two peaks of Hercules. I might be not getting the exact wording yeah, right, but some, something like that. And uh, the port across the way over here is uh, Algeciras, and that's what tomorrow we're going to be headed there to take the ferry over to Morocco. Um, he said that's the second busiest container port in Europe after Rotterdam. And he was also explaining that in Gibraltar they have very low taxes on fuel here, so um, that's why a lot of people drive here. It further brings people into Gibraltar and a lot of the barges will tank up here as well. And he mentioned that they can save a hundred grand um, just by tanking up here. So. Not to sound like a know-it-all, but I kind of assumed that that was the case as far as like the gas being cheaper because when we walked in, like three or four cars pulled into there. And that's kind of what a lot of German people do in Switzerland as they cross the border, tank up, go back home. So when I saw that, it kind of, I was going to say something to you. I don't know. Should have said it. Should have said it. Easy to say that now after you got the facts. True. So we just read that the Rock of Gibraltar is a really important um, migration point for birds because either from Europe or coming from Africa, depending on which way they're going, they land here for a bit of a pit stop, refuel up with food and water and go to the next place, either direction. 
So we're now entering St. Michael's Cave up on in the rock, I guess. Not in the, the rock. rock. Ooh, lighting up. Oh, how pretty. Oh, Tegan, it's like a club. This is your first cave club. Uns, 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 uns. Here you go. A tour guide was telling us that the acoustics, acoustics are really great inside here um, just because it's a cave. Yeah, sounds good. I'll be testing out my opera singing down there and we'll see for sure how the acoustics are because with these vocal cords, we'll know for certain. Come on, Tegan. Do the robot. Oh, they turn off the music. You were saying there's stalagmites and stalactites here. And my Mimi always said, the way you remember them is stalactites with T is for tits. Hanging down. Or is it they're poking up because they're perky? I don't remember. Monkeys. Oh, God. That one's gonna. Right, let's not get their attention. I have lemon in my hair. They might really like it. Oh, boy. Oh, God. You want, you want to have this job so you can No. Monkeys? You can definitely reach his hand in and roll down the window all the way. <laughs> we, we know that, right? No, I want to. Honestly, don't worry. She's afraid of everything. It's just the normal. Come on. I got this one. That's... <laughs> you're, too, you're too clever. You like, you like him? So there's the quintessential view of the rock. Great day to be here. Thanks up for our crappy weather we had in Porto. So down here is another view of the airport that we crossed before. I'm pretty high up now. Uh, our tour guide said it's the fifth most dangerous airport in the world. We assume because of the fog. Also that uh, soccer field down there, that's their national stadium. Um, they just were given a national team separate from Spain and the UK. Uh, I think he said five years ago. I didn't know it was that recent. That's cool. Didn't we watch their game recently when they won and they were crying? Yeah, they won the first game against Armenia. Some of the players like aren't even professional, they're just semi-pro and they have normal day jobs. So it's weird that they're like playing against actual national teams with full professional players. It's impressive. I would cry too. Just look at the size of this versus like an actual country, you know? So our tour guide of course is from Gibraltar. He was talking about what it's like to live here. Um, it's a British territory, so everyone has British citizenship. Um, however, in addition to speaking English, they all speak Spanish as well, just because Spain is right there. Um, but it's kind of like a little bit of a mishmash with both languages, although pre predominantly English. But he said there are like certain, there's a certain slang that they use that neither British nor Spaniards understand really. Um, so that's kind of cool. I didn't know that that's how it was. Um, the government um, sort of incentivizes them to stay here. Um, he was saying that his rent in the two-bedroom apartment is only 74 pounds a month. 74 it's like, pounds? It's like $100 a month, which is crazy. Um, he gets free health care and all the other things that you would expect in mainland Europe. So, not a bad place to live. No. Um, Do you imagine $100 a month? And like, we for the tour, it was... 30 pounds each for us so we gave him 60 pounds yeah. just for the two of us and there were like five or six other people on the tour with us so he made like two months rent just from our tour which was like an hour long probably should have told us that after we paid him yeah i was thinking that because then i was like well i guess he doesn't like, need this he doesn't but. need a tip our tour guide also mentioned that tegan was the youngest person he ever gave a guide to and he was very impressed by her demeanor and how polite good she was. Right? Justin and I, we went to a, uh, an Italian restaurant, even though our Airbnb lady told us that it wasn't good, or that Italian restaurants in this area aren't good. You want to try it, Justin? This is bruschetta. We've never seen bruschetta like that. It's just toasted bread. Exactly what it looks like. <laughs> Toasted bread with a tomato on it. This McDonald's, they sell um, they sell beer here at the McDonald's. And there's Colonel Sanders. Alright, we're about to embark. 
on our ship to go to Morocco. You excited, baby? Yeah. When Justin and Tegan are with me, I don't look as weird, but when I'm alone, I look completely homeless and like a swine. <laughs>